good morning, everyone, or good afternoon uh, for some people if you're joining us in Europe. Uh, good evening. Um, thanks for taking the time to join us today. And you know, we want to cover you know how can you get a lot more patients while also reducing your marketing spend. Um, I feel like these days dentists spend a ton of money on marketing, and they seem to be getting less and less results over time. Marketing is getting a lot more competitive. If you were, for example, running Google Ads maybe five years ago, uh, you could get a nice flow of patients for spending, you know, maybe only five hundred to a thousand dollars a month. To get the same amount of patients today in 2024, um, you'd probably have to spend three times as much, right? So as more and more dentists flood to digital marketing, like Facebook, they're advertising on Google, you know, there's not a lot of dentists who throw their money at newspaper ads anymore. As more money floods into digital marketing, uh, the costs go up, right? So it's very much like an auction system. If there's a ton of dentists wanting to get their website to rank higher or to show better, uh, and they're throwing more money at it than you, then you know, costs basically go up for everybody. So today, what I want to discuss is some you know, tactics and some, some strategies that you can implement without having to spend any money. In fact, if you follow what I'm about to show you in this video and this, this webinar, um, you can actually reduce your marketing spend over time and attract more patients and attract better quality patients too. Um, so, Let's dive into it. So first of all, let's talk about some common mistakes that we see a lot of practices make. So we work with hundreds of offices across US and Canada, and we typically see the same sort of like patterns with every new office that we work with. So first off, a lot of practices, they kind of sprinkle time and money on a bunch of different things, right? They're, and, and it's logical from their perspective. You know, they say, I don't really know what's going to work for me. I mean, my you know, practice is unique. My area is different. Uh, demographics are different. I'm not really sure what's going to work for me. So let me try a couple of different things. And if I'm seeing results, you know, if I try Google or SEO or Facebook or flyers, you know, wh whatever it is, if, if I'm seeing that it's, it's getting the phone to ring, it's, you know, getting patients on the schedule, obviously I will do more of it, right? And if I try it and I'm not really seeing any results, then, you know, I can, I can cut it off. And on the surface, that seems like a very reasonable and <laughs> rational strategy. In reality, what happens is the vast majority of the time, what the dentists find out is nothing really works. They, they seem like they're just lighting money on fire. Everything they're trying doesn't seem to get them anywhere. In fact, the only thing that seems to work is referrals, right? Referral seems to be like the, the, the steady uh, you know, uh, way that they're getting patients. And it's not for the reasons they may think. It's not that, you know, I tried SEO, I didn't really see any results with SEO, you know, maybe that doesn't work or maybe Facebook doesn't work or flyers don't work. That's usually not the issue. The issue is that they're kind of doing a half-assed job at a lot of different things, okay? So because they sprinkle their time and money on so many different activities, sort of like dipping their toes in the water, trying to see what works, they don't end up doing a really good job on any of the activities they're doing. And, you know, when you put in half the effort into something, you're not going to get half the results. You're not going to get any results at all. It's going to feel like nothing's really working. Um, and I, I have this conversation with dentists all the time. Like we say, hey, let's let's set up a Google Ads campaign or let's try this strategy. And they say, oh, no, 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 no. I already did that a couple months ago or a year ago. You know, we throw a bunch of money at it. You know, it, it didn't really work. And I look at what they were doing and I look at the you know, campaigns they were running and I tell them like it wasn't, it didn't work because you didn't really do a good, like you did a half-ass job at it. And I, you know, sometimes they, you know, they get a little bit offended and I have to say like, I'm not trying to insult you, but you know, let's, let's be logical about this. When you look at your website or when you look at that Facebook campaign you ran, can you honestly sit here and tell me that, you know, you did like a way better job than any other dentist in your area? Like, is your website number one? Do you have, uh, you know, better photos than everybody, better reviews than everybody? Like, what exactly is it, is, you know, is exceptional with, with, with this work? And they sit there and they think and they say, well, I mean, it's not number one, uh, you know, but I don't think it was you know, a terrible website or I don't think it was a terrible campaign. And I tell them, yeah, you know, it wasn't like at the bottom, right? It wasn't wasn't terrible 
but it wasn't at the top either, was it? Right. So that must mean you're kind of somewhere in the middle, right? That's the textbook definition of, of you know, doing a half-assed job. And when you put in half the effort, you don't really see half the results. You don't see any results, right? So that's kind of mistake number one. It's better to go all in on one strategy, even if it's an old strategy like, hey, I really want to do flyers. Not a problem. If you commit to doing flyers at, you know, at a better quality, you put more time into designing the flyer, you spend a lot more time testing it, researching it, uh, doing a really excellent job, you're going to get much further ahead using you know, what I would consider an outdated strategy than somebody who's doing digital marketing or you know, more modern marketing, but they're just kind of you know, uh, half-assing it, right? They're just trying for it for a little bit. If they don't see results quickly, they move on to the next thing. And, you know, it, it basically becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So, you know, there's a high cost to like ineffective marketing because you end up spending a lot of time, a little bit of money here, a little bit of money there, but, but it adds up. And primarily the issue is like, you lose a lot of uh, opportunities, right? There aren't an infinite amount of patients looking for a new dentist every month, every week. There's only a handful of them. And if you're spending months and months and months like trying to do something that isn't getting the needle to move, uh, you're losing a lot of like potential patients that you're never gonna get back again. Uh, because once someone picks a dentist, they typically stick with that practice for a long time. And they, you know, th that's a patient that's no longer, you know, accessible to you. That person's probably gonna bring in their whole family there. They're gonna refer their friends there. And then you have all these patients that, you know, basically you no longer have access to. So, you know, marketing is always changing. It's evolving. Um, the strategies that typically worked well in the past are not the ones that are going to help you grow practice today. We see, you know, a common mistake is um, some, some practice owners have had a lot of success with, you know, a, an initial practice. You know, they scaled it up. They got it to, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 active patients. And then they open up another office thinking, you know, I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the other one. But they don't realize like what they did with the first practice 10 years ago is not really what's going to work today. Right. So you also can't rely on, you know, hey, this seems to work for other offices or it worked for me in the past. or It seems to work for these other offices back then. Um, that tends to be kind of a mistake as well. You need to be a little bit more forward thinking. So marketing in general, you know, it's gotten more complicated. There's just more options than ever, right? Before you had flyers and newspaper ads. Now there's Facebook, TikTok, SEO, social media, email marketing, SMS marketing. I mean, you know, it makes your head spin, right? So often when dentists come to us, they're always asking like, where should I start? What works? What doesn't work? You know, uh, it could be really confusing. So to make this easier, to, to kind of like demystify a lot of... Um, sort of your options in marketing and give you a better framework for how to think about, you know, attracting patients, how to grow your practice. Um, you know, I, there, there's sort of four key elements you want to be knowledgeable of and how they work and how they work together. And I think once you understand these better, you're going to see that marketing isn't all that complicated. The things you need to do, uh, you, you kind of start to see like what, how everything sort of pieces together. Okay. So the four components is, you know, awareness. How do you build awareness? How do you get people to know you exist? How do you build trust? People do business with people they trust. Just because I know you are you have an office doesn't mean I want to come to you. Doesn't mean I think you're a good dentist, right? When they call you, how do you convert them? How do you get them? What do you say to them? What do you do to get them to take that step and actually book the appointment and actually show up to the appointment? And then ultimately, how do you turn, you know, a patient uh, into a repeat patient? who keeps coming back and ultimately into a promoter who promotes you to their friends, their family, and, you know, kind of like gets the whole thing to basically draws more people in, creates more awareness, you know, builds a lot more trust. Uh, you know, you convert that patient, you basically have like a, an engine that continues to accelerate, right? So let's talk about the first one, awareness. This is the simple one. This is the one that most dentists kind of understand. It doesn't matter how good of a dentist you are, people don't know you exist, right? You could have, you could be a phenomenal dentist, you could be great at, you know, delivering implants or orthodontics or whatever you do, but it doesn't matter if I don't know who you are, right? Um, so this is sort of a trap that a lot of practices fall into. They're kind of like a best kept secret. It's the best dental office that no, a lot of people have never heard of. If you were to go in, and talk to the dentist, talk to the staff, you'd be pleasantly surprised. It's a really wonderful office, right? 
Uh, but new people who are, you know, maybe they move to the area, they're searching online, they're looking for a dentist, you know, they don't come across this office. It's kind of like a best kept secret. It's a hidden gem. So this is what, you know, a lot of marketing tries to solve. We get you awareness. When you send out 20,000 flyers to the neighborhood, you're creating awareness, right? Uh, if you're running Facebook ads, Google ads, if you invest money into doing search engine optimization, you try to rank better on Google, um, you know, it is an important component, right? Like you, you, if, if you don't have a, lot, a strong awareness building system, then of course, all you're going to get is referrals because the only way people could discover you is if, if they're referred to you by, by, you know, by, by somebody else, by one of their friends, their family members, because when they go online or when, you know, wherever they go and search for a dentist, you're nowhere to be found, right? So that's the simple, right? However, this is where a lot of people kind of stop and they don't realize there's a couple extra steps after that, that if you don't figure out, then the best marketing or the best awareness building kind of campaigns or whatever you're doing to, to get people to know you, it won't have any effect. People are still not going to come in. So just because somebody knows you doesn't mean that they like and trust you. People do business with people they like and trust, right? So, um, you know, there's many dental offices to pick from. If I search on Google, you might come up as the number one search result. But think of it like this. Most of you have probably gone on Amazon to buy something. Okay, maybe you're buying a, you know, a pair of headphones. Okay, so you search for, you know, wireless headphones. And you're going to be presented with a lot of options to pick from. You're probably not going to buy, impulsively buy, the first search result on Amazon. Right. You're, you're probably going to go through a few of them and take a look at the pictures, take a look at, you know, like the information, you know, what features do they have, things like that. This is what patients do as well. So you just because you rank high on Google, just because you, you pay for an ad to show you at the top of the page or, or whatnot, doesn't mean that most people aren't going to look at a few other options. Right. So with the pair of headphones example, when you go on, you know, Amazon and you look for a pair of headphones, every pair of headphones says that it offers amazing sound quality, even the ones that are like $10 and they sound terrible, right? Everybody says that. Everybody says, oh yeah, phenomenal sound quality, excellent product. Uh, you know, they try to talk up what they have. You're never going to see a product on there that, where it says, eh, for the price you pay, it's okay. You know, <laughs> it gets the job done, right? They all say it's great. This happens in dentistry too. If you are in a room with a thousand dentists and you say, Put your hand up if you offer exceptional dental care. <laughs> Everybody will put their hand up, right? If you say, put your hand up if you know you've got a wonderful team who you know you treat patients like family, they're all gonna put their hands up, right? So um, you know, what do you do? Well, with the headphones example, you're probably gonna look at reviews, right? I can't touch it, I can't put them in my ears, you know, I'm just seeing a picture on the internet. I don't know if it's a good pair of headphones, so I'm gonna trust what other people have to say. And this is what they'll do in dentistry as well, right? So let me show you an example. So here's a testimonial video uh, for a patient who, you know, came to, you know, uh, this dental office and they're sharing their experience. And give me a second, let me share this. Hopefully you guys can hear it. When I came in, I was so welcomed and um, my business was so appreciated and everybody has been so friendly and kind and the service has been excellent and the care that, Everyone here, right from the front desk to the hygienist to the dentist, has been excellent. So I've stayed. Uh, so you got your front cross done. I got it. That was excellent. No one had ever even noticed that before. No other dentist I had been to. And um, I was so pleased with that and the service that I got with that and just the care that everyone went into to make me sure that, you know, they fit in perfectly. They were the right color, the right size. So I've been very happy with that. Would you recommend this so well to others who probably want the same treatment? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, last one, not the least. What sets the true smile aside from other clinics? The service. The staff, um, the way that they make me feel very important, the, the attention to details um, that everyone does. Look at your baby. It's just 
I feel very, very special when I come here. And my teeth are well taken care of. Let me know in the chat. Hopefully you guys could have heard that. Um, but yeah, imagine you're, you're a patient, you're looking for a new dentist, right? Every website you go to says, yeah, we offer exceptional dental care. We treat patients like family, you know, uh, you know, who are you going to trust? Like, but if you come to one of these pra a practice where you see a video like this, you know, it starts to resonate with you with a bit more because there's a big difference between, you know, a dental office who sings their own praises. You know, we think we're great versus somebody who has their patients singing their praises, right? So, you know, if you see one video, you might think, well, maybe it's the, you know, the dentist friend or it's a paid actor or something like that. But if you go to a website and you see a, a lot of different patients, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20 of these videos from, you know, different people, you'd have to be, you know, pretty crazy to think like, oh, they must all be fake. You know, most people are going to look at that and say, okay, well, that, that looks really impressive. I mean, I haven't seen that on these other practices. These guys they must do something really well. Like, you know, the, when, when you say like, yeah, we treat patients like family, it seems like, you know, these people are really telling the truth. And reviews play a big role in this as well. I mean, you know, in this situation, who would you pick? Let's say, you know, you happen to be in Toronto, you're looking for dentists near me, you see two offices, both have nice websites, both look like they're good dental offices, you know, just like the headphones, you have two pair of headphones, they both say, they offer great sound quality. They both have nice looking photos, but it's not like you can touch them. You can't feel them. You can't put them in your ear. You don't know who you're going to trust. But on one side, you see one practice has 500 reviews and a 4.9 out of 5 rating. And a different one has 4.5 uh, out of 5 rating with only 75 reviews. 91% of people, according to Google, and I believe their data, are going to pick this one, right? Now, here's the thing. This might actually be a better dental office. They might actually do a better job at dentistry, you know, uh, and this happens all the time too. Sometimes the practice that has more reviews, it's not because they're doing, they, they have better dental care or their team is nicer. They're just better at asking people for reviews. They're just better at focusing on that objective and it works. Um, you know, this, uh, the whole thing about not being a best kept secret. If you focus on that reputation, you gather testimonial videos, you gather reviews, you're going to find a lot more people decide to pick you. Even if you rank number one, again, people are going to look at a couple of different options. And this could really be, a, you know, a main reason why they might pick your practice versus the competitor down the street. Another way to build trust that's, you know, free, it's accessible to everyone is local awards. Pretty much no matter where you are in U.S. and Canada, there's going to be a local newspaper that runs a Reader's Choice Award, right? Um, to this day, I've never found any place in US and Canada that doesn't have like something like this in their area. There's also, you know, a three best rated, um, you know, it's, it's a, a word website that you can, you know, apply for. Um, there's, you know, Invisalign, uh, depending on how many cases you do, you can win like Invisalign badges, uh, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, et cetera. Uh, I mean, there's many options, uh, you know, may, many ways to, to win awards. But when I come to your website, right? A lot of practices, you see a lot of information about the dentist. At the end of the dentist's name is a bunch of letters I don't really understand for all their certifications and degrees and, and see things, uh, you know, continuing education they've done, you know, which most patients don't understand. They don't know what that means. They don't like they don't resonate. That doesn't resonate with them that, oh, this office must do a better job. But if I see awards like you're voted, you know, the top three cosmetic dentists in your area, you have done, you know, uh, you're a gold Invisalign provider. That's going to resonate with the average person a lot more. Because if I see a badge like this, it's kind of like saying, you know, one practice says we do dentistry and we're great versus another one saying we do dentistry and we won, you know, an award for it. It's, it's kind of like someone saying I do gymnastics versus I won a gold medal in gymnastics, right? It, it, it's it's very different, right? It's going to position you as an authority. It's going to position you as something special, something a, a cut above uh, everyone else. So now let's talk about converting the patient, right? So we've done some sort of marketing to build awareness. You sent out flyers to the neighborhood. You ran some Facebook ads. You you know put money into search engine optimization to get your practice to rank higher on Google. You did Google ads, you know, there are a million options out there. 
they went to your website and they see that, you know, you've got great testimonial videos, great reviews, um, you know, awards, badges. It looks like you have a practice with a really great reputation, um, you know, so they decide to call. Okay. This is the next part where things really fall apart for a lot of offices. Um, how your staff talk to that patient is going to either confirm that, you know, when the patient calls at this stage, they think, okay, this sounds like a really good office. But if the person answering the phone answers the phone with hello, right, <laughs> which you see more often than you think, or they have a tone that just says, you know, I'm busy, like, what do you want, right? Or, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a hurry, like, what, what are you looking for? It could really rub people the wrong way. Right. Because when they're calling, they're kind of trying to figure out, are you congruent with the image that I, you know, I, I, I built up of you in, in, in my mind? In my mind, I think this seems to be like a, you know, an, an interesting, very high quality dental office. They seem to have they seem to be doing some really good things because patients are saying great things about them. But if when I call you, I don't have a good experience or, you know, something just rubs me the wrong way. The customer service is not on point. Uh you know, everything's going to fall apart, right? So as a dentist, you know, your your success and the success of your practice really at the mercy of your team, okay? So one of the things that Rep Up Dental does is we monitor, you know, hundreds of thousands of new patient calls. And we analyze, like, you know, are they handled well? Did, did they come off? Does, does the staff come off like they're nice? Are they helpful? Are they, you know, are they leaving that patient with a really great first impression? And there's a lot of cases where what we hear are, you know, examples like this. So bear with me for a second. Let me share. This is, by the way, a real call recording. Speaking. Yeah, good morning. This is calling. And uh, do you have a lot of patients that do like porcelain veneers for cosmetic reason? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. You do. Okay. Do you carry the bleach shades, porcelain veneers? Oh, uh, I'm not sure the shades uh, right now. Uh, you know when you can ask the dentist, like the because so the, the the bleach shade is not carried by all the dentists. Um, the dentist is not here right now, so that's why I don't. It's I'm not, not sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. What about the do you know the cost of it? I mean, the produce cost. Um, not really, but like um, uh, my colleague, she could call you back and let you know about all the details. Okay. Uh, is it, can your colleague call me back today? Because I have to decide today who to go with. Uh, um, she's not here today. That's why. Right. Oof. Okay, so put put yourself in the shoes of this patient, right? You're looking for veneers. Um, you great, read great things about this office, great reviews, great testimonials. You call the office, and this is the experience you get. They don't know what sheets they offer. They don't know how it works. They don't know what the costs are. The dentist isn't there. You know, you got to talk to my colleague. My colleague isn't here. I mean, would you come here, right? And here's the thing. This particular office, their dentist is phenomenal, incredibly experienced, has done a lot of cosmetic cases. Um, you know, but if I call you and, you know, this is the kind of experience I have on the phone, it's not going to leave me with a very good first impression. It's going to make me feel like I've been duped a little bit, right? It's like maybe they paid for those reviews or I don't know, like this, there, there's such a night and day difference between their outside, you know, uh, you know, like what they look like on the outside versus what they sound like internally. Think of it like, you could look like a Ritz Carlton from the outside, but if I call you and you sound like it sounds like I'm calling a Motel Six, you know, it, it, it's going to cause some issues there. Um, and often there's, you know, there's problems like this that many dentists don't realize are happening. There's most offices are getting hundreds of phone calls every month. Nobody has time to sit there over the receptionist's uh, shoulder to figure out, you know, you know, how are you treating these patients? Are, are there things you don't really know? Are there questions that come up that are stumping you? Are, you know, creating a, like, are we leaving these people with a good impression or not? I'll share another example. Um, this is from an existing patient. Sorry, we missed your call. If you could leave us a message with your name, number, and reason for calling, we will get back to you as soon as we can. Hi, this is. It's my third time calling. I hope someone can call me back at.
I'd like to make an appointment for my father. Thank you. Bye-bye. So another common thing we see is like, there's a lot of missed calls in many dental offices. On average, you know, most offices are missing around, you know, uh, 25 to 30, 30% or more of their calls. Uh, people are leaving voicemails. Nobody's getting back to them. And this shocks a lot of dentists because they think like, no, if somebody calls, if somebody leaves a voicemail, no, no, my, my team is getting back to them right away. And we ask them, how do you know that? How are you tracking that? And they sit back and they say, well, no, I'm sure it's happening. I don't have to track it. My, my team's great. You know, and then we share recordings like this with them and we say, are you sure about that? Right. Um, so it's really important that, you know, you monitor what's happening when you when that patient calls. You're spending all this time and all this effort, you know, getting reviews, building up your reputation, spending money on, you know, marketing to get more awareness. And, you know, you're looking at your schedule and you think, well, there's just there's a bunch of holes in the schedule. Obviously, the marketing must not be working. Right. But many dentists don't consider that there actually could be a ton of people calling you, but maybe the, you know, we're not picking up the phone a lot of the time. Um, and by the way, that 25, 30% missed call rate, it's during business hours. It's not, people are not calling at 9 p.m. at night. People don't generally call you when they know that you're closed. Most missed calls happen around 10, 11, 12, uh, you know, every day. Um, so there's a lot that could be slipping through the cracks that you might not even be aware of. Often when we share this with the dentist, right, they can't believe it's happening. Again, every practice that we work with, um, you know, new dentists that we sign up, they are all convinced that, you know, we say, hey, if I, if I get the phone to ring with 10 new patients, okay, who are looking for Invisalign, they're looking for implants, they're looking for, you know, checkup and cleaning, how many of those do you think your staff convert? Virtually everyone we speak with, they always say, oh, a hundred percent or 90%, you know, if, if 10 people call, nine of them will get booked. And I ask them, how do you know, how do you measure that? <laughs> and they say, well, well, we don't measure it, but you know, I, I'm pretty confident. Like, you know, we've got a great team, you know, people love them. Uh, yeah, we, we book a lot. And then we start sending them recordings, like the ones you've just heard where, you know, people are calling in and, you know, they're getting a terrible experience and we send this to the dentist and they send us emails back like this, you know, Oh my God, this is absolutely not the way I want my business handled. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. I will address this ASAP. Here's another one. I'm appalled. Uh, I'm absolutely appalled by this. I can't believe this is my staff. I have so many questions. It's not just the dentist. Office managers are often really surprised too, because again, office manager juggling a million things every day. Uh, you don't have time to sit there looking over everyone's shoulder checking what they're saying, how they're doing. I mean, you're assuming, you know, when you're, when you're around, you think, yeah, it sounds like everything's working really well. When we start to share what's actually happening on the phone, you know, we get emails back like this, you know, wow, that call is very difficult to listen to. I noticed a uh, particular receptionist going through some rough days lately, not to excuse her mannerisms by any means, but that was probably the worst customer service call I've heard on her part in the two years she's worked here. But here's the thing. They weren't tracking calls before. So I asked this office manager, how are you so sure it's the worst call in the last two years? You haven't listened to any of the calls. You're just assuming that this is like, this is just the first time we caught this problem. Do you honestly think that in the previous two years, before we gave you this call, everything was great, right? Uh, and she agreed that it's like, yeah, actually that's a good point, right? Uh, here's another office manager. Uh, this is absolutely painful to hear. Two staff were involved with this patient. I'll contact this patient after I discuss with you know, a particular doctor. It's a mess from the start. Um, so it's something a lot of practices don't consider. They spend a ton of money on marketing and they look at their schedule. They don't see a whole ton of patients coming in and they just assume, well, the marketing is not working. But the marketing got you the awareness. And, you know, if you build up your reputation, your reviews, your testimonials, you're going to get more people who are aware of you to call you. But again, if, if when it comes to the phone call, if your staff are, they don't sound confident, they don't sound nice. And here's the thing. No staff member is waking up, you know, every day thinking, how can I do a bad job right at my practice? How can I sabotage the dentist that I work for? Like none of them are doing that. Often, um, you know, most dental staff members, they're overwhelmed. They're beaten down. There's a million things they have to do every day. They're rushing. You know, there's so much that they have to juggle. They're not mean people. They don't want to sound like that with patients. They just got so much going on. They're just trying to get someone off the phone as quickly as they can because they've got to move on to the next call. 
they often lack training, they lack support, they lack, you know, uh, a helping hand. So this is not to say, hey, you should listen, to, you should record your calls because your, your team is terrible and they're doing a terrible job. None of these people are trying to do a bad job. The veneers call we listened to earlier, that was a really nice receptionist. Uh, like I personally know that person. She, she was a wonderful person. She just got stumped. She wasn't sure how to answer those questions. Nobody sat down and ex explained to her, you know, here's what veneers cost, here's how it works, here's how we do it. The dentist hired them, showed them, you know, here's the desk, here's the chair, here's the phone. Good luck, right? And uh, they assumed that, you know, well, they've been working in dentistry for a couple of years. They probably know everything they need to know, you know. So my message isn't that the, these staff members are terrible and you need to, you know, kind of listen to them to, to, to find these, these sort of problems. Is that, you know, they, a lot of them really need support, right? Um, so then, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the, the last piece, the generating referral. So ideally, um, you know, every patient that comes in, if you treat them well, if you, you know, deliver exceptional dentistry, if you uh, treat them like family, your goal is to turn that patient into a repeat patient who keeps coming back, right? And you have, you know, they're going to keep coming back every uh, four months, five months, six months for cleaning. You know, maybe in the future they consider teeth whitening, they want Invisalign, you know, they're going to come to you. If every time they come back, you continue to do an excellent job. You know, when they call, you're pleasant on the phone. You're really nice. You know, you're, you're delivering that high quality customer service, that high quality dental care. The goal is to turn that repeat patient into a promoter, somebody who's going to go and talk about you to their friends and family and say, you know, I'm a wonderful dentist. You should really go there. They're phenomenal. I've been going there for years. They're really great. You know, that's the goal. And if you do that effectively, then what you will find is, you don't need to spend a whole lot of money on building brand awareness or awareness because, you know, as you're getting a bunch of patients through this funnel, they're starting to generate more and more referrals for you. So all of a sudden, you know, if we go back to this awareness step, you don't need that so much. You don't need to keep spending money on building awareness. You continue to build your trust, your reputation, continue to do a better job on the phone treat patients really well, that will get you more patients coming in. And then it becomes, you know, it starts to rev up. The problem is a lot of practices, you know, 95 to 98% plus, when you go through their patient management system and you look at, a, you know, every patient management system has a, referred, a referral report where you can track how many referrals are we getting, where are they coming from, most of them don't actually use it or don't use it effectively. If you pull up a, you know, show me all the referrals that came in in the last three months, there's nothing in there. Now, when I ask the practice, do you get referrals? I said, yeah, tons of people. Okay, who are, who are the ones that are referred? Uh, you know, they don't know specifics. So it's important that you track, you know, how many patients are referring other patients and is this improving over time? right? Because every practice gets referrals. Every practice tends to pat themselves on the back and say, oh yeah, yeah, we get referrals. People like what we do. Um, but some practices are much better at getting referrals than others. So it, it's really, it, it's important to track how many, how much of your patient flow is coming from referrals. What percentage of patients who sign up with you over, let's say a year, refer somebody else in that time? And, and is that rate actually going up? And every patient management system can do this. They all have a referral field, a referral source field. Um, they all have this capability from what we've seen. But let's talk a little bit about, you know, what should you track to, you know, make sure that these four pillars, you know, are we building more awareness? Are we, um, you know, building our reputation? Like, what do you track to make sure that, you know, you're actually headed in the right direction? So I'm gonna show you what we track. And, you know, we have a software for this, but we started doing this years ago with Excel. I mean, you could do this on a piece of paper. You don't need anything fancy. This isn't meant to be a sales pitch. Uh, we've got a tool and a team that, you know, kind of makes this all easy, but everything I show you here, you could do by just opening up Notepad on your computer and, or Excel and, and tracking it. So what we track, I think is really important. You want to track how much money you're spending on your marketing. You know, if you're, if you're hiring an SEO company, or you're, you're spending money on flyers, whatever you're doing, um, obviously you're signing those checks, you know, your credit cards getting built for those services. You want to track how much money is going out. Most companies who do like Google ads or Facebook marketing, generally you're paying them a fee, 
but you're also paying, you know, kind of like an ad budget to Google or to Facebook. So you kind of want to track these separately. How much am I paying for a company's expertise? And on top of that, how much ad budget am I giving them to kind of manage on my behalf, right? And you kind of combine them together. You then want to look at how many new patient leads do we get? By leads, I don't mean clicks to your website or somebody filled out a form. Uh, it's like, okay, they filled out a form. Are they a patient? Well, what did they want exactly? You know, a lot of marketing companies, you know, they send reports to their clients about, here's how many impressions we got you here. You know, your website got 300 more clicks uh, this month. Uh, you know, your Facebook, we got 50 Facebook likes this week. You can't pay your staff or your expenses every month with Facebook likes, or it's not a currency, right? So um, you want to track like how many real patients who are actually looking for dentistry picked up the phone and called us. Or if you have an appointment form, it's a good idea to make that appointment form a little bit longer, you know, maybe ask some more questions like, you know, what are you looking for? Have you, when's the last time you've been to a dentist? Do you have updated x-rays? Do you have insurance? Like you kind of want to make them jump through a few hoops through that form because anybody who takes the time to submit that form is probably somebody who actually wants to come to your office. If your form on the website is just give us your name, your email, your phone number and a message, um, you know, what we've seen with a lot of clients is, you know, their form will say, oh, we got 15 uh, form submissions. And the marketing company they're working with say, we got you 15 leads. But when you go through those form submissions, uh, 13 out of 15 of them are people trying to sell them marketing. It's, it's a spam message, right? And the marketing company doesn't check, like, are those 15 submissions real patients looking for a dentist or what are they exactly? Well, they don't dig that deep, right? So you, you definitely want to like track how many people called us that said they're a new patient, they were interested in a certain, our services. Again, you can have a notepad by the front desk, just track, you know, how many people call you every single month. Um, you know, we have a software that does that. Uh, you know, we listen to the calls and we figure that out. But you want to do that. And then you want to essentially divide, you know, how many lead, how much money did we spend on marketing and how many leads did we get? And is that getting better over time or is it getting worse over time? Right. Ideally, what you want to see is, you know, your cost per lead drops because you build your reputation up and, um, you know, more people are calling you and, you know, uh, it, essentially you're, you're driving more like you're getting more fuel efficient over time. Now, leads aren't, you know, patients. Right. So just because somebody calls you doesn't mean that they actually are serious, doesn't mean that they're going to come in. So inevitably, you also want to track how many of those leads actually turned into booked appointments and how many of them actually show up, right? Because sure, you might get a lot of, like you could do certain types of marketing that gets you a lot of phone calls, but it's just a bunch of people that waste your time. They never book an appointment or they book an appointment, they never show up, right? That's not a good quality lead. So you want to track how many of those leads are turning into appointments and is that getting better over time, right? Most practices, when we start working with them, you know, I said before, if you tell a dentist, I get you 10 leads. How many patients do you think you'll book? Almost all of them will say eight out of 10, nine out of 10. In reality, after measuring hundreds of thousands of new patient calls for all kinds of new clients that we work with, the industry average is actually more like one in three. So if three people call, they'll be lucky if they book one appointment, right? And then, you know, some of those won't even show up as well. And people are typically shocked when they, when they see that. So it's important to track, you know, how many leads are turning into appointments. But then you want to break down, you know, a little bit further. So we look at new patients. Let's, you know, isolate all of the calls and the appointment forms where they're new patients. What happened with those? So this particular office, uh, they had 79 new patient leads this particular month, and they turned 48 of them into booked appointments. So 61%. Uh, is that good? Well, according to all the other clients we were working with that particular month, they closed about 50%. So they did better, right? Um, Again, new clients that we sign up, generally we see a booking rate of about 25 to 35%. Once you start measuring it, things start improving, everyone's starting to be more aware of, of the problems and things improve. So this practice did well. You also wanna track existing patients too. Just because someone's a patient doesn't mean they're gonna to continue to come back if they don't have a good experience, right? I shared that call earlier of you know somebody saying, hey, I've called three times, this is my third voicemail, can somebody call me back? I'm trying to book an appointment. Do you honestly think this person is going to call back a fourth time? No, she's just going to go to another dental office. 
And this happens all the time in many practices. They're not really aware of, you know, what is our attrition rate? How many patients are we losing? Why are we losing them? What happened to them? So in this particular case, this practice got 127 existing patients calling in, trying to get book appointments, and they managed to book 91% of them. Pretty good. Sometimes you don't book it because, you know, it's kind of in limbo. They're not really sure with their schedule. You know, it takes a little bit of back and forth. Uh, cancellations. Every practice is going to have people calling to cancel. Okay. When we ask the dentist, hey, if somebody calls to cancel, you know, they say, hey, uh, I'm sorry, I got an appointment this afternoon, but my son is sick. He got his son home from daycare. I have nobody to watch him. Uh, I can't come in. Right. Does your staff offer them another appointment time? Do they say, oh, okay, no problem. I'm sorry to hear that. You know, that that's terrible. Uh, let me look at the schedule. Uh, I've got an opening on Monday. You know, we, we book up really quickly. So I, I want to make sure I get you in. Can you make Monday afternoon? Everybody says, yeah, of course they do that. And then we start playing recordings for them of, you know, here's a call where that's exactly what happened. And the receptionist said, uh, okay, I, uh, I canceled this afternoon. Uh, you know, call us, call us when you want to come back. Bye. And we say, but I thought you offer them other appointment slots. What happened here? You know, sometimes, you know, they, they panic and they say, oh, well, uh, you know, no, no, that particular patient just was, you know, that person canceled a lot. It's not that we forgot to tell, to, to offer them another slot. We, we didn't want to get them back in the schedule. They canceled a lot. They, you know, they're just not a really good patient. Sure. Maybe that's true. Right. I don't know. Is there any notes in the system about that? No. Uh, but then we share another call and another call and another call where the exact same thing happens. And we say, are these all terrible patients? I mean, come on, like, like 15 of these people, they're all terrible. Right. Um, so this is another one of those holes in the bucket where you could get a lot of people calling you in, but, um, you know, this is how you can lose patients. So most offices, when we start working with them, their rebooking rate on cancellations is like 20, 30%. And the dentists are shocked. They think everybody's being offered another appointment slot. Now, sometimes what happens, you offer them another appointment slot and they say, you know, I don't know if I can make Monday because uh, I work shifts. You know, I got to talk to my boss. I don't, uh, I, I don't know. Let me call you back. Right now. What if they don't call back? Do you call back? Most dentists think, well, yeah, I, I, I think my staff called back, right? It's like, how do you check that? Do you, do you track that? Right? Well, surprise, surprise, you know, a lot of the time it doesn't happen. So it's, cancellations is a really important thing to track. Missed calls, like I said earlier, um, a lot of practices when we start working with them, they're really surprised that their missed call rate is 25, 30 or more percent um, all during business hours. But once you start tracking it and reporting on it, guess what? Everyone's more aware of it. The number typically drops. You know, you're not going to get every call. Sometimes multiple people call at once. Sometimes the receptionists are juggling a million things. It happens, right? But you want to reduce this. And then we break down, you know, how does the team perform on the phone versus email communication or, you know, patient forms if they fill out an appointment form. Um, one big hole in the bucket we see in the beginning is that if somebody sends in an appointment form, it can take a while for someone to get back to them. So if you call, you know, the phone's ringing, they pick up the phone, they talk to you. But if you send in an appointment form, it could take days for anyone to get back to you, if at all. And so, and so, you know, generally what we see is if somebody submits an appointment request, the booking rate tends to be low in the beginning. When you analyze why, it's like, well, they submitted a form and no one called them back for four days. Guess what they did? They went somewhere else, right? Or what we've also seen happen is somebody submits a form, they say they're interested in, you know, Invisalign or whatnot. And, you know, two days later, they get an email saying, uh, please call the office to book an appointment. And they think, why do you have a form for me to book an appointment online? If you won't even do that, I still have to call you. Why not? Like, why is that an option then? Why are you wasting my time? And of course, they don't book and they go somewhere else. So going back to the follow ups, right? Like sometimes, you know, the patient doesn't know their schedule, doesn't know when they can book again. They said that they're going to call back. So that call, well, we would consider it kind of like in limbo. Maybe they call back. Maybe, you know, we need to call back, but we need to follow up. We need to have a conclusion. Are they going to book or are they not going to book? What, what's happening with that person? And, and again, this is where a lot of opportunities slip through the cracks because the patient says, yeah, I'll, I'll call back on Monday. But no one wrote that down. Nobody has a reminder to say, well, if he doesn't call, I'm going to call him just to you know conclude what happened with this. Does he want to come in or not? Um, you know, so generally when we start working with, um, with practices, 
there's a good 15, 20% of patient opportunities, both existing patients and new patients, where the conversation kind of gets left in, well, I got to talk to my husband and see when he can come in, you know, and then that's it. It just, it's like no one ever calls back. Um, and it doesn't mean that the patient isn't serious. It just means, you know, life happens, something happens, you know, you might have heard a baby crying in the background, right? Sometimes you have kids, sometimes, you know, uh, you know, like life happens, you forget, right? This happens a lot with, with cosmetic uh, cases too. Just because they don't accept treatment doesn't mean they sat there, they thought about it and they say, you know what, it's not for me. It's just other things happen. They put it on the back burner. Um, they kind of forget about it. And by the time they remember it again, it's, it's not really a priority anymore, right? So you want to, when that patient contacts you, they're interested in the appointment, you want to kind of follow up on that and not let it, you know, not let that lead get cold. Um, and for the patients that are not booked, it's good to know why, right? There are some reasons that are, you know, reasonable. For example, the person didn't book because we don't accept their insurance. We don't, we don't, we don't accept Delta, you know, sorry. Um, that's okay. That data can be interesting because you could do an analysis over time of saying, you know, how many patients did we lose because we didn't have this particular PPO? Um, you know, that could be interesting. You might decide to like, hey, maybe this is actually worth accepting. Or you may find that, yeah, I'm okay with that. You know, we lost this many people because of insurance, but we didn't really want those patients. So it's totally okay. Sometimes you lose patients because of scheduling reasons. We don't have any availability. Um, you know, the next appointment slot is in three weeks, right? Sometimes when you look at the scheduling issues, the doctors don't realize that there's just not a lot of flexibility in, in or there's not a lot of logic to how the bookings are done. If a patient calls in, even if they're not looking, they're not in a rush, they don't have an emergency. There are, you know, in some offices, they just book them in the first available time slot. And then when somebody who has an emergency needs to come in, there's no more availability because it's taken up by somebody who would have been happy to wait two, three, four days a week or two and didn't really care. Right. So sometimes, you know, if you can see like how many people do we lose to scheduling? When were they trying to book exactly? Like what time were they looking for that we didn't accommodate? Then you have some data where you can optimize, you know, when you're open, when you're closed, when you need more staff, when you need more, you know, sort of availability. So it's interesting to analyze like why you don't book patients. Uh, and sometimes there's other reasons, you know, and it's good to kind of diagnose, you know, was it price? Did they end up going somewhere else? Like what happened with that? And what can we learn from it? What can we improve? Another thing we do that I think is important for every office to do is to track the calls, you know, that aren't done well and but also track the calls that are done well um you know in many offices you know from what when we've talked to receptionists they kind of feel like if i make a mistake i get yelled at but if i do 10 things really well nobody ever pats me on the back nobody ever says you know you did a great job nobody seems to care right i've heard from receptionists i've worked here for 10 years and this dentist never even bought me a cup of coffee Right. So it's understandable why in a lot of offices, you know, receptionists answered this phone with sort of like, hello, this sort of deflated attitude of, you know, nobody, if they do a great job, nobody rewards them. Nobody recognizes it. Nobody appreciates it. So I think it's important to do both. So let's look at some examples here. So in this particular call, it said too many issues with this call to mark just for improvement uh the reception should know at this point not to just give out the price for a cleaning without at least some kind of discovery questions or transition statement the patient called asked how much a cleaning was and she gave the answer she left no room for conversation no interest in booking the patient she didn't find out if the patient was new or existing or anything about him to help uh her build rapport right so it's a learning opportunity it's like hey hold on a second um you know if they're calling and they're asking, what do you charge for Invisalign? You know, we don't want to just give them the price. We want to say, well, well tell me about what, what's your, your situation. You know, why are you looking to get Invisalign? What are you looking to correct? You have a gap in your teeth, you know, um, you know, what's going on? Like have a conversation, build a better rapport with them. So, you know, you can take these, you know, listen to the recordings and, you know, work with that receptionist to, to improve things. Sometimes what happens is, you know, you talk to the dentist and you say, if I, if I call your practice and I say, how much do you charge for implants? Do your receptionists just spit out the price or do they try to have a conversation with me and talk a little bit about how you do it and, you know, offer to, you know, you should come in for a consultation. 
They say, well, no, of course they, they, they'll talk to you. They'll, they don't, they're not just going to give you the price. And again, I've had numerous cases where I share recordings with them it's, and say, that's not what happens. In fact, 90% of the time when they call, they just spit out the price. In fact, they don't even ask if they, if they want a consultation. Often the conversation ends with, uh, okay, thanks. Okay, bye. Right, and that's it. But it's also important to track all the good things they do too. It's, it's important to reward them for the positive behaviors as well, right? So in this case, you know, we mark this call as exceptionally good. Uh, nice professional scheduling by you know, receptionist name. She handled this call well, was polite, thorough, developed some rapport without being nosy or shaming the individual for waiting too long. Just good overall experience. So when your staff see that, you know, you notice the good and the bad, and if they do a great job, you will recognize it, reward it, appreciate it. You know, it incentivizes that good behavior. The reason customer service tends to lack in a lot of practices is because, I mean, put yourself in their shoes for a second. You're in an office and if the you know patient calls to cancel and you're not able to rebook them, you know, you get yelled at by the dentist because why do we have a hole in the schedule? Why, why did this person cancel? You know? Um, but when you go above and beyond and you're really nice and you get people in or you try to save a you know a cancellation because the person said, I'm not sure if I can come in next week, I gotta talk to my boss. Uh, he forgot to call back, but I remembered and I called him back and I got him back in the schedule, right? Nobody will pat them on the back for that. Right. So over time, when you work in an office like this, you, you learn to like, why go above and beyond? Nobody cares. Nobody notices it. And on, on, the, on the other hand, you know, it's easy to, swill it, uh, to sweep things under the rug because, you know, dentists can't yell at me if they don't know about these problems. Right. So it's easy to just kind of like brush it aside. Um, so, you know, you want to like bring to light, you know, the good behaviors and the bad behaviors. You want to weed out the people that are not doing a great job or help them, help train them. Because sometimes, you know, most of these receptionists, they want to do well. They've just kind of been thrown into, you know, a, a mess and, you know, hey, sink or swim. And you also want to reward the people who are going above and beyond and, and improving. Um, so on our end, what we do is we track like the small you know, daily victories, daily victories lead to monthly successes. So every day you're going to have patients calling and you want to figure out things like, okay, this person called, he wanted a teeth cleaning. Did we book him? Did we not book him? Is it, you know, are we going to contact him back? Uh, did we lose it? If we lost it, what was it? You know, this one, uh, this particular patient was looking for teeth whitening. Um, you know, we didn't manage to book him. Why the insurance that he had wasn't accepted, right? Um, if you track these little interactions and you do a good job every day of making sure there's no loose ends, there's nothing slipping through the cracks, that's how you're going to see a lot more patients you know, coming in. And then, yeah, basically comes full circle, right? If they have a good experience, you're treating them well, you're not forgetting about them, you know, they're going to basically become patient from patient to repeat patient. Um, as they keep coming back, they're going to like you and trust you more. They're going to become promoters. They're going to promote you to their friends. Those people come in. You ensure by tracking everything that those people have a really great experience. No, you know, someone leave a voicemail saying, this is the third time I'm calling. Can someone get back to me? Um, you know, and then it comes full circle. And, you know, overall, you could reduce how much money you spend on marketing, uh, rely on your reputation to drive more people, rely on your referrals to continue to drive more people and, you know, make sure that that wheels keep spinning. So if you, uh, you know, I hope you found this useful. If you want to learn more about kind of our software, how we do this, again, everything you could do on a spreadsheet, it's not that complicated. That's exactly how we started too. That's how we were tracking it for our clients. We saw a need for this. So we started building it out into software and you know, building a team around analyzing how practices are performing and trying to fix little, little things in day-to-day -day operations. And that's what's led to, you know, a lot of our clients being able to, you know, double or triple their patient flow while also reducing how much money they spend on marketing at the same time. Um, so yeah, if you want to learn more about that, you can head on over to revupdental.com. We've got case studies and testimonial videos and things like that about the dentists we work with. But I'll stick around if anyone has any questions, especially about like data and things like that. Um, you know, happy to stick around and answer any questions you might have. But once again, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, hope, hopefully you'll join the next webinar as well. So yes, webinars are recorded. So as soon as we finish this up and we end it, uh, it'll compile a recording and it should email it out to everybody. Um, in the event that you don't get it, just email info at RevUpDental, but you, you should get it. But if, for whatever reason, if you don't get the email or maybe you sign up with one email and you want us to send the recording to you know uh, the office email or something like that, 
you can message us at info at revupdental.com and just ask for the recording. Usually in about a week or two, we'll also put it up on YouTube. So if you head on over to our YouTube channel, we put out a lot of content about you know how to do marketing, how to you know do a better job on the phone, verbiage your staff can use, how to handle different objections, you know, like when people call and ask, like, what do you charge for this? Like, what do you how do you respond to that? Uh, so you'll find a lot of great stuff there. Uh, yeah, so we offer website management marketing services. We started as a marketing company. Essentially, why we pivoted to more to data is what we found is for some practices, you know, we'd come in, we'd redo their website, we'd do their SEO, we'd do all the marketing stuff to build awareness, and they'd start driving, you know, 20, 30, 40% more patients. But there was a lot of offices that we worked with where, you know, we we're doing all these things, but then the dentist was saying, hey, I'm looking at my schedule and it's still filled with holes. Like, what's going on? I'm not really seeing a lot of patients. And it kind of confused us as well because we thought something doesn't add up here. You're ranking better on Google, more people are coming to the website. They seem to be clicking on your email and your phone number. Like it doesn't add up here, something's going on. So we would ask clients, okay, how many new patients did you get last month? And they'd say, you know, 20. Okay, and how many people contacted you? Like, did you get 30 phone calls and you booked 20 or did you get 100 phone calls? And you like, how many people reached out to you? And they would say, oh, very little. Like, what do you mean very little? What's the number? And I say, uh, well, I don't have a number, but like there's not many people calling. So we thought, okay, well, that's that's odd. So what we did is we we set up a tracking number on their website to see how many people actually call. And we would come back next month and show the dentist, like, look, you're saying nobody's calling, but last month you got 300 people calling this number. And this number is only on the website. So they're obviously going to the website. Where else are they finding the number? Uh, so how could there be nobody calling? There's people calling and they would be really surprised and, you know, they'd show it to their team and it's like, what's going on? Like Nick is showing us that there are calls and it's, you know, their team would say, well, uh, they're not new patients though. They're existing patients. It's like, okay. I mean, sure. Some, some of the calls are going to like, probably the majority are going to be existing patients, but when we looked at the data, it's like when we started with you, you, you were getting 150 calls a month. Now you're getting 300 calls a month. How could they all be existing patients? Surely some of them, a percentage of them have to be new patients. What percentage are new patients? And they'd say, very little. It's like, what's the number? How are you tracking this? They're not tracking it, right? So we changed our system and we say, okay, uh, when you call, it's going to say, thank you for calling ABC Dental. If you're a new patient, press one. If you're an existing patient, press two, right? So we spent another month, we tracked the data and we found that, okay, 120 of the 300 calls that came in were new patients, right? So we show the dentist and it's like, they're saying they're new patients. They're the ones selecting the auction, you know, like, yes, most are existing, but 120 people are calling you saying they're new patients. What's going on? Again, you know, we, we keep following this train of logic. And it wasn't until we started recording the calls and showing people like, here's what's happening when they talk, when they call you, would you book here? Probably not. Right. Um, so, you know, over time, what we realized is even if you do a really good job with your marketing, you've got a great website, you've got great SEO. If you don't look at what's happening under the hood, like, you know, how your practice is running day to day, you're, you're still going to light money on fire. You could have the best SEO company in the world. They're going to get you to the top of Google and you're still not going to see a whole lot of patients in your schedule. Things tend to fall apart in the day-to-day -day operations, not because this, that your team is terrible or receptionists are, are bad or anything like that. Um, there's just too much going on, right? So we, we thought, you know, the best way to help practices is if we build a system that kind of catches all these things that slip through the cracks, you know, prioritizes them, work, work with the team on how to handle these different issues and just kind of tie up loose ends. And then if you do that, then just about any kind of marketing you do, like you set flyers out, you do SEO, it's going to drive more patients because you know the whole process becomes more efficient. So our software, uh, we do market traditional marketing, like website, we build websites, we do SEO, we run Google ads, you know, your standard digital marketing services. The analytics is what helps us make sure that those things actually drive a return on investment, okay? So we don't want to report to dentists Hey, last month we got you 500 website clicks. Like, you know, you can't, what do I do with that? Can I deposit that in a bank account? Uh, you can't pay your bills with that, right? The clicks are not, uh, you know, they don't have any value in my eyes. 
So what we wanted to report on is, okay, you spent this much money on marketing. How many patients did you actually get? And how much did those patients spend with you? Like, what was the production? And ideally, what you want to see is that, hey, we spent a dollar on marketing. And, you know, in the first six months, it generated five, 10, $15 of production, right? That's when you know things are working well. And if you can see, you know, what activities are leading to, you know, return on investment, and which ones aren't, then you can systematically start cutting all of the activities you're doing that don't drive any results. Um, so often people will use our software to analyze the marketing they're currently doing, and they start to see what parts of it are actually effective and what parts of it are just kind of lighting money on fire. So yeah, we uh, have a video that kind of explains our process. Um, so Adrian, if you're still in the chat, just make a quick note to send our demo video. Um, it'll basically sort of explain how um, our scorecard system works and, and whatnot. The point I'm trying to get across is not like you need special software to run a good practice. It's good to track things. If you track a lot of the, you know, how many calls did we get? How many of those are new patients? What happened with those? Like who? talk to them? Did we book them? Did we not book them? Did they show up? How much you know, treatment did they do with us? If you can see the sort of big picture, you can start to see where the bottlenecks are at. And once you fix those bottlenecks you're in your more strategic and intentional about where, where you're putting your time and money, that's when things are going to get unclocked. Whereas most offices, what they do is they just throw money at, you know, try SEO, try flyers, try this, try that, hoping that they're going to land on some sort of you know, if I just sprinkle this on my practice, uh, my patient flow is going to go up. And, and generally, the the bottleneck or the block tends to be an internal one. So people search for an external solution to what is virtually almost always an, an internal problem. Uh, so we work in both U.S. and Canada. We have clients all across uh, North America. We were based originally out of Toronto, but we've got team members uh, in Europe, all across North America. Um, so yeah, we kind of, we're kind of international at this point. Uh, we we only work with dentists in US and Canada, so not in Europe. But if you send us an email at info at Rev Up Dental, uh, we can share a you know here's kind of like a demo of how our system works. That's a little bit more in line. Uh, our YouTube channel is there to just educate people on. Here's how you can do a lot of this stuff yourself. If you're in a position where it's like. I just want someone to do it for me. You know, we think it's important to understand how a lot of this stuff works so that you can do it yourself before you hire a company, because then I think you will start to appreciate, you know, why all these different steps are important. It's not about just throwing money at Google ads. That's not how you grow a practice. There, it's a lot of little things you need to improve. And once they all click, that's when, you know, practices will go from a million dollars to $2 million in a year. Um, that's how you, you know, wrap them up. Okay, so we'll, we'll cut it off there. If you, if anyone has any additional questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, again, our main email is info at Rev Up Dental. Uh, if you want to speak to me specifically, it's Nick at Rev Up Dental. Uh, if you're interested in maybe taking a look at what we do, you can book a demo through our website. And again, on YouTube, you'll find a lot of great videos on marketing strategies you can do in house with your own team, um, training videos for your staff on how to you know book more patients, how to talk about. You know, if people call for bigger procedures, how do, how do you approach those calls? You'll find a lot of great resources there. So thank you for joining us today. Hope we see you on the next webinar. Take care, everyone.